welcome back to the nerdy news you need to know throughout the week on iHeartRadio and podcast services around. There's so much world because my name's Huddy. Things are happening right now. And that's Kevin. You're officially listening to this chaotic episode of what, Kev? Crisis on Infinite Podcast. Huddy, I figured out our side hustle. We need to, be, we need to become an OBS. Uh, start an OBS school. You that's, know, that's what we need to here's do. Here's what happens is you learn one <laughs> skill. And you don't tell anyone else about that skill until they need to absolutely copy your setup for a podcast. Exactly. It's going to cost you ten ninety nine. And that's how I stay relevant. <laughs> <laughs> and that, my friend, is how I bought you my pony. So if you didn't know, we are live now recording this podcast on twitch.tv slash infinite underscore pods. That's where you get to hear sort of the rough drafts of everything that's going on in the podcast. If you watch us on demand or anything else, you kind of... Get the edited versions a little bit, where you know you don't hear the the uh ohs or the hiccups because we thought you know we had fixed our little preload of like hey we're getting ready stay tuned and all of a sudden we realize oh wait now the audio kicks off whenever the video does so there you go this is this is gonna be a, a fun time of learning on OBS um, hopefully you're all hearing us I'm gonna actually double check real quick <laughs> uh, yes they can because I had us up which led to the cacophony of audio that was going on. <laughs> Great, great, great. Uh, but hey, uh, also, Kevin, we need to work on our pointing skills because you pointed at me, which usually means we're stu- I need to talk, but you pointed at me saying the video started. That's what caused the hiccup. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, he meant, oh, shoot. Oh, 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 stop. And then I go. <laughs> you know, we're learning about hiccups. You know, we, we're, we're working out the kinks for you to give you a better podcast. And maybe we'll have something special for you this Saturday, maybe. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Patent pending yeah. through our spousal approvals. We'll find out maybe on yes. Saturday you'll have something special <laughs> for you. <laughs> Might involve this thing right here. If you're watching the video podcast, and if you're not, well, it's something that you wear on your belt. Or it could be called a belt. Or it could be called a title change. Depends on what you want to do. Not a belt is a title. <laughs> it's whatever you want to call it, baby. But you can see everything we're talking about. So much more. We're going to hot995.com slash crisis crew. Like we said, at infinite underscore pods on everything else. Fun part is we got a jam-packed show for you today. Not only are we talking about, you know, some much needed changes for Rick and Morty and everything related to a person that probably not going to promote anymore on this podcast because he's a horrible human being. But we're also going to talk about WWE 2K23, a bunch of news coming out for that. What you might have missed at the Xbox Developer Direct, kind of their sort of mini conference. And, as always, on Thursdays, breaking down that episode of The Bad Batch with episode 5, a.k.a. called what, Kevin? I don't remember. Honestly. Entombed. You forgot the joke you were making earlier. That's okay. It's oh, been I a did, whirlwind setting up the podcast. <laughs> Bad batch was in one in in one eye and out the other ear, whatever it is. Oh, I don't sure. know. I was like, okay, I'm, whatever you're gonna do there. Yeah. Uh, but we always properly start the podcast after we get through the rigmarole of everything, including just getting excited for the podcast by doing what you doing. We talk about the things we've been playing, things we've been watching, things we've been living. Because it is Thursday, ya boy, aka hoodie me gets to go first. And happy to say, uh, I finally started Mythic Quest season three, and so far pretty good it is definitely more just more mythic quest right now so if you weren't vibing with one and two you might not vibe with season three but i'm on the lookout for something and it hasn't happened two and a half episodes in yet so gotcha now did you watch season one and two i did uh more and i actually watched it and we i was waiting till everything was out so she would watch it with me together she finally said you can watch it on your own i was like well <laughs> we're taking this bad boy to the gym on the treadmill I, I I tried to watch episode one, and I couldn't get through it without me thinking that, thinking that um the uh, the main guy main character of the show wasn't Mac from um Always well, it Sunny. Is Mac. It, it was just hard to think. I'm like, he's not Mac, but he's still kind of Mac. <laughs> and I just, I just I just couldn't differentiate the characters in my in my, in my dumb human brain. <laughs> uh, but so watching that, it's good so far. Uh, on top of that, Moore and I have started the newest season of The Circle because you know she's. Says she doesn't like reality shows, but she does. Uh, and uh, so far, it's all right. I don't, I don't know. I feel like the circle kind of lost its shine after the first season. Because then it's like, oh, okay, we know where we're going, and you haven't really like made it better or improved upon. It's kind of just been the same formula, but you just kind of change. Like, oh, voting, it takes longer to vote off people instead of you know being one every episode. 
I don't know how you guys do, do, do the reality dating stuff on Netflix. It's, well, it's the crazy. circle is just like, it's just more like, who do you not like based on their picture? So it's just like normal social media, you know? Yeah, I, I've, I was never part of, I, 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 I kind of met Alicia right before the, the social dating world took off. And I'm immensely thankful for that because I didn't have to deal with that. Like I, I was talking to our guest co-host this morning on our show. And he was t- showing me the picture of this person. And he accidentally super swiped her. I was like, well, that was your fault, buddy. <laughs> that was your fault. <laughs> uh, but that's pretty much what I've been doing. I'm obviously trying to still train for this little 8K race. I know it's like a training for an 8K, but let's face it. Your boy needed to get in shape for this 8K in March. And uh, it's been interesting. We sort of transitioned into treadmill instead of outdoor running because it's too cold. So we're on a treadmill. And the, it's rainy today, too. It's wet. Yeah, well, today's my rest day. I have purposely made my rest days Wednesday or some days of the podcast recording. So <laughs> it all works out. It all works out, <laughs> even though my days are. It's weird. They're like, no, you need to run on this day. I'm like, well, if I just I run on my own schedule. I still run the same thing, but it's backwards days. I walk very swiftly. Very backwards s- very swiftly oh <laughs> don't get me started on backwards running but kevin that's what's been going on with my life what have you been doing i've been doing a whole lot of this just working adobe edition working has been my life enti- money. this entire week <laughs> <laughs> just doing a, a lot of um in case radio jargon promo refreshes for my morning show because mm-hmm. they're old and i'm tired of them mm-hmm. so i've been sending my program director audio um lots of audio like put these in now because i'm sticking here in the same thing mm-hmm. every day kevin and executive I'm sending... <laughs> producing over there i get it uh i sent him like 20 20 cuts i'm like if you, you can make at least 10 cuts out of these 20 and rotate them we'll have to worry about it for the rest of the year because <laughs> you never hear the same one twice and i'm tired of hearing them do the what, same I, three. <laughs> what i tell you to do will be fine damn it <laughs> it's, it's funny though because I, I don't know if anybody else is experiencing this right now in their workplace uh, I have a new uh, uh, assistant program director um, who was just a coworker probably a month and a half ago, mm-hmm. and we seem to be like very uh, like as the kids say vibing. We've been like, we vibing on, on, on the same wavelength <laughs> when it comes to what things we need to do for yeah. the show and for the station, and it's weird because you, you usually don't get that in radio. <laughs> <laughs> I have people I like. Oh, good. He's laughing because it's true. It is. True. Um, it's, it's a rare occasion. Other than that, um, nothing. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't done really nothing in the past two days besides um, wait for Ant Man uh, Quantum Mania because I'm really well, excited about that. I today. did see. We talked about this. Uh, I think the end of the last show and the show before that. The leaked script that was leaked. You looked at like, it, Kevin. Come on. I found it, but I know what I did. I just kept on scrolling. I didn't. I didn't even. I didn't even entertain the thought. Like, no, I'm going to wait. Here, here's the thing: if you watch, you do that, and then say you go to you know your midnight's whatever midnight screening. It's 7 p.m. or 5 p.m. Yeah. on a Thursday or whatever, or even a Wednesday, and then you say right before the preview start, blank dies or blank doesn't make it, whatever. You should be banned from the theater chain for life. <laughs> If you have that power. <laughs> and honestly, the other thing, too, is like if that script leak was, wasn't real and mm-hmm. it's actually just a, a script somebody wrote and put leaks in the man's script and some, some, some somebody wrote. And let's say it was a pretty cool story and that story doesn't happen. And suddenly your your um, opinion of the movie is already t- tainted because you wanted what you saw, what you read and not what they actually made. That yeah. happened to me one time mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. Transformers 2 because I thought I found a leaked script of Transformers 2. And it had this really cool scene of Ultra Magnus uh, doing a power slide and the Autobots falling off of it and, and, and transforming. And that didn't happen. And I was upset. <laughs> well, I think the other thing is, too, because we're in a culture of just TikTok, is if you get spoiled a scene on TikTok, whether it's intentionally or not, and then you know that scene going into the movie. Like for me, example, I saw um, a scene from the menu, the very end of it, uh, was on TikTok. I was going to watch it that day. I was like, well, this scene hasn't happened yet, so she's safe, she's not safe, vice versa. But then until the scene happened, I'm like, I kind of know how this is going already. <laughs> yeah, the TikTok is the devil when it comes to spoilers, man. You, you don't even look for them. They, they find you. <laughs> no, they'll find, they'll find you. Anything else, though, bud? No, that's all. Um, I'm boring. I'm <laughs> that's boring okay. Person. Because what's not boring, Kevin, is the news. Because it is time... For the news. It's time. 
news. Did you hear that under our new setup? Probably did. We didn't yeah, test that. Okay. I did. I did hear it. I'm very happy. <laughs> Whew, look at the draw on that one. All right, great. Uh, first things first. First things first. I'm not really. There we go. Uh, we got to talk about some T Lo, some T Law, however you want to say it, some The Last of Us, because on top of a great episode two, it's making money slash breaking records left and right, baby. Yeah, I believe it, it, it grew like one of the largest audience between a, a premiere and a second episode. Like everyone, yes, HBO Max uh, or totally uh, HBO. Uh, okay. So that includes HBO Max, I guess too. Uh, but it, it passed Euphoria and House of Dragon for having the largest audience growth in between a one a pilot in the second episode. Dope as hell because we all kind of last last week collectively like, oh, this is actually pretty good, and then boom, we have even more people watching it. I think actually Euphoria was topping house of dragons just on growth because house of dragons has so many people watch the premiere at first so it was kind of steady before it was like eh, and then pew, because of labyrinth and tiktok so <laughs> yeah my, my wife actually asked me if we want to she wanted to watch she wanted to watch it that's why i watch it with her um and i told her play the game the game is very 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 depressing um so when you see me pull my phone out something bad's about to happen <laughs> no, yeah, I, don't want to, yeah. I don't want to experience it again. <laughs> but the other interesting thing with that, actually, thank you for transitioning, is the game Part One, which is the PlayStation Five version of The Last of Us, and Re- Last of Us Remastered, which was PS4 slash you can play on PS5 version, has increased sales by two hundred percent since the first two episodes have come out. So if people are playing the game, and the cool thing is, so far, I have. I know about some things that happened in The Last of Us, but not everything. I don't know, like, this next episode, episode three, I don't know who these characters are. Uh, it's it's uh, Ron Swanson and then the the main manager from the first season of White Lotus uh, that uh, the chapters in the show are matching the game. So that's really dope because people are then watching the show, then playing it out in the game kind of in real time with it. Yeah, that's really cool. I and mean, then the way, like, uh, I've been, um, like, I haven't watched it yet. But seeing how they're they're like interpreting parts of the game and, and adding parts, mm-hmm. that, but it's not taken away from the entire story of the game. Also, I wonder if this this like I think I said it before um before the show premiered, if it's going to have like the um the Game of Thrones readers versus the Game of Thrones watchers thing, where like when something horrible happens or something big happens, the game players keep their mouths shut and not tell the actual just watchers of the show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But, but like you said, TikTok. Might just find out on but by scrolling along. Well, I mean, the main <laughs> thing is at the end of this season, if it's following the the, the, the pattern, you know, if you've played the game, you know what happens. Um, so that's kind of like I think the big like the red wedding of this season so far. I don't know. Uh, spoilers, I guess, for Last of Us, you can skip like ten seconds in this podcast recording or mute yourself if you're on the video. Uh, three, two, one. Spoilers is that Tess dies, who was like you originally think is like your second character the second main character on the show and she dies the thing that they changed now we're kind of out of spoilers is how she dies uh so it's, it was interesting to see that and so i saw a lot of people in the game like oh it was, it was kind of it was weird i will say that but it kind of made more sense in the show of the universe they're setting they kind of changed how the the mushrooms in the show the cordyceps also like infect people and everything which is scary because it can happen in real life if global warming gets worse <laughs> So yeah. I, have, I have I have seen those cordyceps TikToks. They're pretty funny. Um, funny, they're scary, Kevin. I do not want that to happen. <laughs> but also, again, spoiler alert. Skip ten seconds. Uh, if you were upset about the way Pedro Pascal as Oberyn Barntel died in Game of Thrones, stop watching the show now. I'm just letting you know. Oh, I didn't know that, Kevin. Stop so watching the show spoil- now. Kevin on a, on. Yeah. Knowingly always spoils things for me. I I knew something happens, but you know what, Kevin? Every time, every time this man, you know, Mandalorian, we're safe. We're hundred percent safe as him as Din Djarin. He can't die. He could. He could if they wanted to. <laughs> what do you think is the will be the more of the outcry? I know we're talking about less of us, but in Star Wars, what's more of the outcry? If Grogu dies or if Man- the Mando dies? I, I think so it might be almost equal ground. Final season, <laughs> like someone has to sacrifice themselves for the other to live. Here's the thing, none of them pop up in the movie, so it's kind of like, well, they could kill you, either, both, or just one of the characters. I feel like it would be sadder, the internet would feel it more if Grogu died, because it's Grogu, you know, it's Baby Yoda, yeah. we've been riding and dying with him for like five years now at this point. Din Djarin, Pedro Pascal, you know, you're used to it from Game of Thrones, and I feel like at the same time, it's like, well, you cried so much at them parting from each other, 
and it's kind of the kind of deep faked us a little bit in the first season when we thought he was gonna die, but then he didn't because IG Taika Waititi saved him, saved the day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I still, I think though, even though he he is Mando, he is um, Joel from The Last of Us. He was in Wonder Woman, Game of Thrones too. I feel like he is still like searching for that Robert Downey Jr. Uh, Christian Bale. I am this character. Well, I mean, even you know I think I mean? it's, it's Mando for sure. I mean, Pedro Pascal it used to be over in Martell, and then now, and then I, I used to always like, oh, he's from the Golden Circle. He's I think he's whiskey or one of the, one of the drink the for the American agents. But he I think he, Circle, I yeah. think he just routinely is adding characters to his list because now you know everyone knows him as Mando. Now everyone's gonna know him as Joel from The Last of Us. Whereas I feel like Robert Downey Jr. is kind of like. Uh, Iron Man, and then you could say Sherlock Holmes, I guess, is like a secondary big character. The only reason I say he's so looking for it because Mando is, is more of his voice and him most of the time. Like, I can't wait till he gets something that's like, you know, like, don't get me wrong. Last of Us is big, Mando is big, but something where it's like, you know, he is I'm trying to think of a character, I don't know. Um, if, they, if they did a new version of Indiana Jones. He's and Pedro Indiana. Pascal was mm-hmm. Indiana. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That, I, 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 would love, I would love to tell oh, something that more. Than, which features him more. Pedro Pascal than, sounds great as Indiana Jones. It does, actually. I don't know why I pulled out it my works. butt. That sounds it's really that cool. that man in a fedora or whatever the fedora type hat he's got that Indian has. Ooh. Trying to you know make some gold monkey statue weigh the same as a bag of sand. Come on. Give it to me. Speaking of that gold monkey statue, do you, do you remember um, Legends of the Hidden Temple? Yeah. Yes, we talk about it a lot on this show. <laughs> why? Did, why did the contestants never know how to put that stupid monkey statue together? Because it's pressure. And here's the thing: when you got what it was like sixty <laughs> seconds to get all three of the idols and match the puzzle, and then you had the temple guardians like Hooga Booga you in the whole time, which literally was like from Crash, <laughs> Crash Bandicoot. Hooga Booga. Um, you'd be scared as hell. Plus, they would change the map sometimes. I noticed, and it, it's weird. You know, obviously, no TV shows kind of batch record, especially like game shows like that. So, like, it was probably was, oh, these three episodes are, like, six episodes apart from each other, but it's the same True. course. So, it, it changed every time. And uh, some of those things were hard. You, like, got stuck in a, a foam pit, and you're like, get out of the foam pit. It's like, I'm stuck here. I weigh 50 pounds as a child. 50 pounds, soaking wet. Help. Help me, please. Please. <laughs> the Temple Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but either way, Last of Us is good. If you haven't hopped on yet, definitely hop on now to watch the show. Apparently, the rumor is episode three is supposed to be where it's at, and that's where like it's supposed to be Chef's Kiss masterpiece level, and it's supposed to be like eighty minutes again, which is great because didn't know this. Fun fact: the first episode was actually going to be two episodes. They're going to do the sort of flashback and then cut to Joel in modern twenty twenty three time. Well, they learned through the last season of Game of Thrones and House of Dragons. I mean, people will watch. A two-hour show if it's good. Mm-hmm. Stranger Things as well. Mm-hmm. They'll mm-hmm. watch it if it's good, but just don't come in on bull crap. You yeah, know? Don't give me some filler <laughs> stuff. I'm like, I'm gonna wait till the last 20 minutes when the stuff actually happens. Exactly. Other interesting <laughs> thing is with this show, I've heard a lot of discussion on if this is matching chapter for chapter, that season two should be most likely Last of Us Part 2. People kind of wanting that to split up. Another thing they could do, we've talked about this, and it's on my fantasy game board, is that they might put Last of Us Factions whenever that comes out and have like standalone stories in between two seasons to kind of space them out and, and age up Bella Ramsey. What would be interesting to see is if um, they have announced The Last of Us 3 before season two is over, mm-hmm. if that will drive video game sales. Oh, I think People for sure. The show, I think you know like, I mean? oh, snap. Like, let me continue the journey. I don't know. That's actually interesting because it's, kind of, it's, the, it's the Game of Thrones effect is that as of right now, you do the pace record, Season two of this show would happen in 2025, most likely, yeah. like January again. And then three, and vice versa, the game for a part three to happen, if it were to happen, the earliest it could would be, because it came out in 2021, would be like 2027, maybe. So that might be a little pushing it. But if they split up the second game into two seasons, then it kind of gives you some wiggle room. And they haven't said anything about like developing both at the same time. I know they developed God of War and God of War Ragnarok kind of sim- kind of. Uh, as far as we know, no. Okay. But you know, you'll find out around E3 most likely if they had that ready to go and what. Uh, right. Other interesting new thing with that. Oh, where was it going to go with it? Is uh, 
Well, I don't know. I forgot what it was. That's okay. <laughs> Old age getting to you, Eddie. Yes. Welcome to the club. What are you going to do? You had a point. You should have wrote it down. Should not be like, oh, I'll hang on to that. No, it's gone. Let me ask you a question. Is there a pen on your desk? Because it's not a pen on my desk. Uh, Well, there's a stylus, and then there's a pen right here. Okay, I don't have a pen. Some I don't have a pen at all. Right there. Well, here's the thing. The pen is far. I don't have paper, so that's not going to help me. I have my computer, so if I don't I type it down, towel. I'm done. For spills. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A paper towel. <laughs> uh, but to go from one video game based property, let's go to one that uh, just came out actually and probably won't be getting an immediate future anytime soon on PlayStation because it's time for some review roundup. Yeah! On Forspoken, the video game. Yeah! Uh, swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. <laughs> Kevin, unfortunately, drafted this game thinking, oh, it'll be all right. They worked it off off the demo. Well, they kind of did it. Uh, as of right now, it's sitting at a 69 on Open Critic, which is kind of where we've been using the, the measure to rate games and stuff. Uh, pretty much how our fantasy game rankings works, which you can click on the links to infinity of this podcast, is if your game is good, it'll score above a 70. You get points. If it scores below, you lose points. So Kevin lost a point, essentially, which no hard, no foul. Uh, pretty much consensus is Kevin. What for Forspoken? The one review I've read so far was actually from Greg Miller, and basically he said, even though the game is well made, nothing will kind of propel you to do to, to play the game. Mm-hmm. So that basically means that the game just exists. It's <laughs> not. It's not bad. It's not good. It's just a game <laughs> yeah i've heard a lot of it it is a cookie cutter like it is very derivative i guess derivative is a good word to say of many games that have come to before of an orphan slash angsty teen gets transported to a different world inhabits powers and must save the world and has a smart slash wise cracking assistant and that's kind of how this game is pretty much just summed it up there for you <laughs> yeah here's tom marks from ign Forspoken's flashy combat and parkour can be fun, but they aren't enough to make its cliche story and bare bones open world very interesting to explore. Uh, Henry Stockdale from Eurogamer, Forspoken takes its time over a while, it takes a t- takes time to get over a wobbly start, but there's something worthwhile among the noise. But still, doesn't didn't say go play it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Roland Bishop from Games Radar says, barring a few set pieces, Forspoken seems to prefer to tell rather than show. So that that's kind of what the, what everybody's saying. Saying there was something here, but they didn't try to figure out what it, what, what it was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so pretty much, if you're trying to get this game, maybe hold off on it till it goes on sale because. Even the new trailer, the like out now trailer, is kind of hiding things in the game of using these critic comments, which a lot of games do a lot of times, taking things out of context and being like, it's great. And that's what the comment, the quote is, but the actual thing, yeah. it's great, but it needs work on blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the bright side of this one is not even with the game, but it comes back to our fancy thing. I only lost a point. And I gained so, a point because it was my counter pick. So you kind of won out of that one. That was pretty good. Yeah, so because uh, I think last time I, like, I lost like maybe eight or nine points or something. Mm-hmm. Or something. Mm-hmm. You picked a bad game. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Yeah. I might have to go uh, see if I can. I can't repick my, my counter pick, right? I think I'm, you I'm can't stuck re- there, Yeah, right? it's the only thing you can't repick, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I, th- I think I'm still looking good. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, speaking of your counter pick, uh, for my list of games. We have to talk about it because we finally know when it's coming out. We got a trailer for it. WWE 2K23. This time, this year, they want you to beat John Cena. Beat, <laughs> beat him. Be stronger. Be, I'm stronger. I'm wiser. <laughs> I will say though, um, if you've played the WWE games over the past, I want to say five or six years, John Cena is an annoying opponent. He really, really he never is. backs down. He's always the best one, even if he's got a lower rating. <laughs> you could you could beat the crap out of him the entire match if he gets a tiny bit of momentum. It's one AA or FU as it was when I was younger. We call or it an FU. S or an STFU, but now it's something yeah. different. I don't know what it's called. Something now. stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, you're you're done. So yeah, he this actually wasn't a bad uh, marketing campaign. I think. Yes. Uh, so pretty much the whole thing was if you saw a bunch of TikTok creators and even Austin Theory, uh, the current United States champion in WWE, uh, saying, oh, I'm here with my tag team partner, and it was nobody. Turns out, yep, believe the hype. WWE 2K knows what it's doing. 
Uh, it was John Cena because you, you can't see him. Ah, you get it? You can't yeah, that's see funny. Uh, so the new trailer came out is Tool because it pretty much started off with Bad Bunny, which is great. It's what a lot of people actually wanted and has a lot of people interested in this game who is now going to be the pre-orderable pre-order character you get with the game by pre-ordering it and all that good stuff. Uh, coming out with an invisible John Cena, pretty much saying, you know, you're going to beat John Cena, fill in his shoes, and take over. I found out that John Cena is the cover star and the My Showcase uh, superstar for this year's game. Yeah, Pat, years past has been Rey Mysterio. It's been... Um, Daniel uh, Bryan. Daniel Bryan, Stone Cold Steve Austin was one. Mm-hmm. The um, Women's Revolution. So they've, 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 in fact, they've kind of gone... Um, um, current superstar, older superstar, old superstar. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they kind of gone too older in a row because Rey Mysterio was last year. He's so, middle, he's still kind yeah, of more yeah. current because he's mm-hmm. still doing stuff. Mm-hmm. So, but um, he, I don't think he's been on the cover since like 2010 or something like that. Yeah, I think it was 2014. I think is the last time he was on it on 2K14. I'm assuming at the time. Uh, but in this, there'll be three editions of the game: uh, the basic version, the deluxe edition, and the icon edition. Cool things with it is the deluxe edition. You got uh, Doctor of Thugonomics John Cena with the U.S. title at the time, and the Icon edition. The cover is John Cena, like artistic. If you've played a 2K NBA game, they kind of went with the same method here of the the expensive edition looking the coolest, really. <laughs> um, sorry if you're watching online. I think we just actually kind of lost connection. I have to restart the oh, stream. Oh, Kevin, quick. no. What happened? But, um, there was a network error, you said. Good thing we're recording yeah, elsewhere error. to save this yeah, exactly. podcast. <laughs> yeah, reconnecting. and But um, going back to, to WWE 2K2, I'll handle that. Okay. But going back to WWE 2K22, it, 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 it's, it's one of those comfort games. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how I always describe Madden. Um, I don't play Madden to play online. I don't play Madden to join the tournaments. I play Madden because it's just fun sometimes mm-hmm. to throw 40-yard touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> well, 2K22 and 2K23 this year too it's just going to be fun to have a cage match with 7 people and see if you can win yeah and that's the cool thing the, the new feature for this is War Games uh, which is a new thing if you watched this year of WWE on Survivor Series it's been a thing in NXT where it's essentially double the ring double the cage size of a match in 3v3 or 4v4 matches it sounds really dope sounds like that's going to be the fun thing to do this year, um, but besides that, it looks like more 2K23 is going to be like an incremental update of just we got what we everyone liked 2K 2022 last year. Now let's just take that, expand upon a little bit, but not change everything out the wazoo. Yeah, because I think the the, the one of the cool things they did that kind of I think everybody liked. I didn't like it as much, but I don't see why they did it. The last two, so 2K22, 2K21, they had those um, creator player modes mm-hmm. with legit storylines that your, your player just filled. And it had crazy crap. Like, yes, you went to hell and fought The Undertaker. Like, you know, you went uh, 20 years to the future and Samoa Joe had a metal arm and Becky Lynch had her own stable full of guys. It, it, was, it was crazy stuff. This time it kind of went back down home where it was just kind of like, you know, text reading, text text um, displayed for, for the stories. It wasn't mm-hmm. nothing too crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you said, it kind of keeps it succinct, not change too much, and just keep it based on the, on the gameplay. Yeah. And I think th- this is going to be a fun game. I mean, me for sure, definitely. Like, I grew up in the John Cena era of the rise of him being U.S. champion, getting the spinner belt on that, then into the WWE championship and vice versa. Uh, but pretty much the main point, actually, of the showcase mode is that instead of you playing as John Cena through his matches, you're actually going to be playing as the people he lost to. So he'll play as like Rob Van Dam versus ECW One Night Stand. You'll play as The Rock, The Miz, all this good stuff trying to beat John Cena, which, like Kev said, is a, is, is a hard task, and it probably will be very hard in that mode. And yeah, John Cena and Brock Lesnar are just annoying. <laughs> well, they got good moves. They have moves that were kind of derivative of each other. Like Brock, Even Brock Lesnar, you have to, you have to like... If you play him on hard, I feel like I had to fight him for like a half an hour one time mm-hmm. to even get him even ready for a two count. It was so annoying. <laughs> uh, but the game, oh, probably should mention when the game comes out. It comes out March 17th, which sounds great because it's two months away. Interesting enough, it's like two months away. It's like, oh. Uh, other interesting thing is, same day, Star Wars Jedi Survivor comes out. So it's going to be a busy weekend in the household day, Hoodie and Kevin. <laughs> 
sister's birthday, so maybe I, I can get it for my sister's birthday, and I'll just keep it. You're like, hey, it's for you, but it's for me, so I don't bother you on your birthday. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, but, Kevin, to get a little bit serious, we do have to talk about the news, because it is big news. You know, we are fans of this show, and uh, who would have thought I have the, the deftly touch on a show <laughs> after I just watched it, because Rick and Morty... Koala Man, Solar Opposites, and Squanch Games, a.k.a. the makers of High on Life, have all officially parted ways with Justin Roiland. Well, let me ask you. I still haven't played High on Life, so mm-hmm. should I just avoid it now? Is that what the thing I should do now? Uh, I would say yes. I think, it, obviously, he's had the scandal. It's, 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 I don't know if it's a scandal, but the, the news he that he scandal. went to court <laughs> and is being charged and most likely arrested uh, for <laughs> domestic assault. And a couple other things. That was the main thing. Um, pretty much the thing is, uh, he's the voice of a lot of things in Rick and Morty. He's not just Rick and Morty, but he's also all these side characters. Same thing for Soul Opposites. I was assuming Koala Man. High on Life, he is the voice of many things as well. And uh, it sucks because it is sort of the a la the J.K. Rowling effect of his... His actions have tarnished the legacy of everything the teams behind all these shows and games and everything have worked hard for. So instead of canceling everything, they decide you're out of here. We're recasting you. Sorry, not sorry. Don't be a douche. Yeah, it. it, it any whenever I see the word domestic violence, I I don't know if he had a girlfriend or if he was married, but that's just like us. Strike one, two, and three. You don't even get a fourth chance. Mm-hmm. I mean, we'll talk, we'll talk to you in ten years, <laughs> type of thing. You know what I mean? Um, and the fact that it, it kind of came out like what, a while after it actually happened is kind of slimy. Um, but then back to the entertainment side of it, though, they're going to keep producing these shows. Yeah, and especially because Koala Man like just came out <laughs> like last <yeah>. week. <laughs> now Rick and Morty, I, I would say he. He's more just Rick and Morty and the funny alien characters on there. Mm-hmm. But everything else, like the rest of the family, um, some of the neighbors, some of the people in the school, is like either, you know, other cast members or guest cast members. Mm-hmm. Solar Opposites, he's he's a lot of that show. Yeah, I think obviously the thing they have to do now is recast everything, which uh, we know for sure Adult Swim has said they're recasting the characters. Um, you know, season six of Rick and Morty just ended. Season seven, we kind of had a story we were going to, you know, both you and I have said that season six kind of was like an old Rick and Morty, ha- like a holding pattern a little bit. Um, and I think really you kind of set it up front is Rick and Morty. And I, social media said uh, the first episode in season seven, oh, our voices sound different. You know why? Let's move on. Because they kind of break the fourth wall and be like, all right, moving on. This is what it is. Yeah. And I think that's fine. I mean, we've kind of Oddly enough, we're used to shows recasting voices because they are more with the times now. Look at The Simpsons. Look at Family Guy with Cleveland. Um, that, yes, they should be black voice actors voicing black characters, vice versa, any race, any character. Yeah. This is kind of the opposite of that because you don't want bad person continuing your show because it's not going to be great for your show. And uh, I'm kind of with this. And, you know, we've seen tons of TikTok voice actors can impersonate those characters very easily. So it's not going to be too hard. You can tell a little bit, but it's fine. That's going to be the weird part because I think a lot of, I don't know about Morty, but a lot of Rick's dialogue was him just improvising. Mm -hmm. It wasn't written. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be, that's going to, because the other creator, what's his name? Um, uh, Shoot, what's his name? The the guy that was on on, um, Community. The other creator of Rick and Morty. Dan Harmon. Dan Harmon. Dan Harmon. He has a task on his hand to to find a really good, voice actor that can also is on top on top of his feet because i like always say the voice acting talent pool is thin a lot of the same people do a lot of the same things all the time mm. as a matter of fact there's a lot of people in rick and morty and solar opposites have been in a million other things that are animated so it's gonna be interesting to see who, how they fill the role who they fill the role with mm. or even if they even like switch i don't know vocal points because his, his stamp is so much in rick and in rick and morty Just yeah. not, not to show but the characters you know what yeah I mean? and i feel like obviously we kind of like season seven debatable if Rick and Morty will end after season seven or not. If it should, I think it probably should now at this point, is we kind of knew where the story is going. Dan Harmon obviously has a template of where they're going. Obviously, he has to fill in some of the, the mid point, mid plots of everything, but it shouldn't be that hard. And I think, obviously, Rick and Morty is Adult Swim slash Cartoon Network's top show, <laughs> like now, ever. Yeah. Um, 
So they definitely want to recast that, which makes sense. And I think, especially look at how Cleveland was recasted on Family Guy. They had an actual notable voice impressionist. And they're like, hey, he's a voice impressionist, so he's been doing this for a while. show's been going on for seven plus years now. Like we said, tons of voice actors, tons of TikTokers, that it shouldn't be too hard to seamlessly transition that and re- address it, then move on. Be like, hey, you're here for the story. Obviously, what Rick says is funny, but we don't have to have someone bad saying those funny things. Exactly. And um, not just him, but the rest of the cat, the rest of the cast and crew of Rick and Morty is extremely talented. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. The, my, it won't be a doubt that they still will put together a funny show. Yeah. It, it'll just be, it's just going to be weird to see, the, like you said, hear that little variance of the characters that you you kind of gotten used to over seven years. Yeah, and I think that's it. That, like I said, is you hear it weirdly first, then you just get used to it after there's more. Exactly, just move on. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but, you know, so, you know what? Sucks to suck. Uh, don't be a douche. Once again, that's a reminder. That's one of our subtitles of this podcast, Don't Be a Douche, because uh, DBD, it sounds fun, you know, when you abbreviate it. <laughs> That's, you know what? We should make new Crisis Crew shirts. Don't just say douchey. Crisis on front and just on the back, DBD. Don't be douchey. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what does DBD mean? Well, <laughs> you'll find out. Uh, but something we'll also find about, well, we just found out about because it happened while we were recording this podcast, is Xbox's Developer Direct, a.k.a. their like, mini presentation for the year. Found out what games they kind of have going on for the next couple months, at least that are being published by Xbox. And... Looks pretty good if you got Game Pass, I'll say. Yeah, I haven't booted up my Xbox since Christmas, so... <laughs> Here's the thing, Kevin. Uh, I'm <laughs> I'm kind of using my Xbox mainly as streaming right now. Because if I had a PS5, let me tell you something. If I had a PS5, Kevin, I'd tell you right <laughs> now. You and I would be playing Horizon together. We'd be playing God of War together. I know those aren't co-op games. We'd be playing them together. I'm getting up real close to the microphone. To tell you. And this is me talking to you, sweet whispers. <laughs> uh, that I would be playing Spider-Man 24-7 because I'm Spider-Man Gomez. Come on, Spider-Man Gomez. Oh, I can't wait until Spider-Man comes out. <laughs> but anyway, back to the Xbox conference. Uh, pretty much they announced that uh, these games, they're made by Xbox developers, so they're coming out soon. First things first, obviously. First things first, I'm not really... I said it. Uh, Minecraft Legends is getting an official April release date and has in a PvP mode. Uh, the upcoming action strategy game will be set in the Minecraft universe and will be coming out April 18th. Uh, it looks like the PvP mode will take place in the same generated worlds as a single-player game we're used to. And it looks like there'll be a lot of different strategies, including base building, mob recruiting, using redstone to take down the enemy team. So kind of your your uh, Fortnites and your Battle Royale is a little bit more like that. So you can you know play Minecraft and not be the podcast game, you know? It definitely kind of is a podcast game, isn't it? <laughs> It is. I mean, you're just building and you listen to, and you make nice things. Maybe Mr. Beast will give you something if you participate in one of his Minecraft videos. I always say I was learning how to play Minecraft, but it's been however long it's been since Minecraft's come out now. I still haven't played it. Well, you know, <laughs> your daughter might get you into it. <laughs> I'm trying to keep her away from it, but the Fortnite, it's inevitable. <laughs> the uh, Minecraft poison. Uh, but Kevin, you'll be excited on this because you drafted this into your thing. Forza Motorsport. Uh, untitled still, uh, said that Forza Motorsport will be still releasing in 2023. It'll feature 20 locations to race at, including returning favorites, uh, and it will be obviously in 4K, 60 frames a second with ray tracing. It will feature more than 500 cars for you to select, even though you probably just pick one car and stick with it the entire game. It's been a long time since I played a driving game. Need for Speed. Hmm. Could have filled that void, but it did not when it came out last year. I tell you, since well, I want to say Carbon, Need for Speed's fallen off hard. Because here's franchise. the thing. Most Wanted, the OG one, you know what I'm talking about. Even though it was weirdly like <laughs> filmed on like it's an animated yeah, it game with live action cutscenes, it was great. And then the Carbon kind of was that a little bit. But then after that, it went weird. And let me tell you this story. Brother John and I really into Need for Speed Most Wanted on the GameCube back in the day. Or maybe it was actually the 360. I don't remember 360, which one it was. Yeah. Uh, and then we got Carbon. 
my 360, this is when Red Ring of Death happened back in the day, kiddos. That's when your Xbox would not Ooh, work. Let me or, tell you about the Red uh, Ring of Death. <laughs> it ate the Need for Speed Carbon game, scratched it all up, and we could never play it again. And that was at the time, you know, we didn't have money to buy games. Once it was bought, and that was it. That's all you got. And so we never played Carbon. I got a rude awakening the other day on TikTok. Um, I follow a bunch of gamer accounts. And this one's account, and it's ruined my day, said that Need for Speed um, Underground 2 came out 20 years ago. And I was like, screw you. Well, yeah. <laughs> Actually, when did Most Wanted come out? We don't know if you're old right now. Speed, Most Wanted. Oh, wait, 09 maybe? 2005. Oh, gosh, we're getting there. Oh, God. Oh, God, we're getting there. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, no. I just turned into an old man there. What are you going to do? <laughs> I can't, you know what? I, I hope that in the future when in our retirement homes, instead of sitting in like a rocking chair, Talking about the, talking about like the olden days when you know ice cream was a nickel. Mm-hmm. We'd be like, "Well, back in my day, we played Need for Speed Most Wanted." Uh, we loved it. It's not rocking chairs. It's the um, <laughs> it's those uh, gaming chairs that don't have the little like feet underneath it where you just sit yeah. on it. <laughs> like, the I remember this is what I played on all the time. It was great. <laughs> Oh god! Uh, but Kevin, we also have to talk about it. Is uh, oh, game still coming? We're still in the Xbox thing. Is that uh, Tango GameWorks, aka Bethesda Studio, has announced Hi-Fi Rush rhythm action game. It's out now on Game Pass. If you're looking for something to play, you can download it now and play. It looks very colorful. It's from the people that made The Evil Within and Ghostwire Tokyo. It's a very night and day of what that studio can do, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, um, Ghostwire Tokyo looked really good, I, I, but I it, never really saw reviews of yeah, it. Yeah, it wasn't it didn't, didn't do too hot. Was it was it kind of like Forspoken, where it looked great, but it was like it didn't yeah, really? Yeah, pretty, okay. pretty much. Um, also, okay. Elder Scrolls Online, if you're still playing that game, you get all the online chapters for free right now as they are getting ready for its next installment. And on top of that, we also found out that Redfall is officially coming out this May, May 2nd. 2023 to Xbox and PC exclusively. It's that vampire fighting game, the 4v1, whatever you want to call it. Looks great. Think that's also going to be a game that looks great, but overall, you play for like two weekends and then get bored with it. Dangerous for Xbox, though, because they don't have that, besides Halo Alt, uh, Infinite, which, I mean, people like it, but it's not like, you know, world changing. Mm-hmm. They don't have that one IP that makes that make you want to go out and buy an Xbox. Well, you got Starfield, exactly. baby. You know, we were, we were hoping on Starfield. That wasn't supposed to be in this conference. It's getting its own thing, but Starfield might be one like, oh, Xbox didn't deliver. We're out then. PS5. That, uh, you might be right. That, that that might be the the one linchpin they have. It's mm-hmm. like, just stay for Starfield. We promise it's good. You know you know, well, that's the thing. Also, you, you have that. Bethesda's supposed to be making the Indiana Jones game. That's supposed to be like Uncharted. But those are like the two things I'm looking forward to the most as an Xbox owner. And then if those don't deliver, and then it's like, all right, even with Bethesda, Xbox, you're still not getting it done. <laughs> and I hate to look forward, but, but that means they, 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 will, they will have kind of lost the console wars two generations in a row. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, and not because of um, a console that's simply better or worse, because the games weren't there. Yeah, and I think really it is, you know, we've kind of known this and talked about this the past, uh, the whole generation really so far. Xbox has been more of the building phase of acquiring studios, but acquiring studios that aren't putting out super AAA yeah. games. They could be really good games, and we've played all these indie games and everything, but it isn't Spider-Man. It's not God of War. It's not Horizon, which Xbox really needs right now. Like you said, Halo Infinite hype was there when it launched with the beta and the multiplayer beta and then when the single player came out and it kind of got a little turdy it's the thing too because with the indie games um even if there's an indie game that's not maybe not on ps sony or not on playstation or not on xbox they're usually on steam sometimes too mm-hmm. so you can still figure out a way to play those indie games if you don't have a console but i still don't understand what happened from when 360 came out they had bangers it was saints row it was crackdown it was grand theft auto not grand theft auto um uh, Mass Effect. Mass Effect mm-hmm. came out. It was actually a um, Xbox exclusive first. It was. It wasn't on P- uh, PlayStation Three when mm-hmm. it came out. So they had a bunch of bangers when it when 360 launched, and I feel like they just lost all of that steam going well, the forward. They, the Connect they, baby. That's what did it. I think you might be right. Honestly, they, they focused so much energy on that stupid Connect <laughs> that had everybody excited for what seven months. 
and that was in everybody's garage or basement or attic, mm-hmm. never to be seen again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was kind of the news for the de- the, de- the developer direct uh, that just came out this week. But don't worry, we still got one more thing to talk about. It's time, Kevin, for Star Wars in review because it's time to talk about the Bad Batch, baby. It was bad, all right. I mean, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I don't know if it was that bad, but I'm sorry. Episode I'm five. Downer. It was called Entombed, like a tomb, and it probably was non spoilers. We're getting spoilers. The closest to an Indiana Jones type adventure we would get on this show. Score was was very Indiana mm-hmm, Jones ish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, they have the license to it because Lucas kind of should have yeah, just did it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sean Williams, guys. It's not Kevin Kleiner. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, come on, just hit that second note. You know what it is. I know what you're trying to do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like Kevin said, probably wasn't the strongest episode. And it does seem like since episode three, yes, uh, which was the uh, Commander Captain C- Commander Cody episode, it's kind of been in a holding pattern, which I've seen a lot of people make articles about, like, Bad Batch needs to move. You know, we're in a holding pattern, but it's like, all right, cool, but what is the point of this show, especially the second season? The Bad Batch haven't really done anything with a main action point. The main thing we've had was with Crosshair and Commander Cody, but, like, what is the end goal? Season one was Protect Omega, and we had the fall of Kamino. What is season two's thing? Is this, Oh, them doing odd jobs as, as bounty hunters. Not bounty hunters, but for higher uh, mercenaries. That sounds like an epilogue. Oh, they lived happily ever ever doing uh, side jobs, you know? Yeah, I mean... I get it. This show is not supposed to drive the entire Star Wars galaxy narrative mm. forward. But, but at the it. same time, don't wait me. Don't make me wait a week for filler. Like mm-hmm. uh, I'm looking at the episode listings right now. Unless we get we get two on the eighth of February, Ooh. we get the Clone Conspiracy and Truth and Consequences. And I'm assuming that's where we get the. <laughs> The plot progression episodes right there. Exactly. Next week is just called Tribe, apparently. I don't know. That that, mm, that, that sounds to me like they go to another planet. Yeah. And they find, uh, oh, what's this? Oh, we have a thing we need. Oh, no. It's just another filler. I'm like, ah, I get it. I understand. This is this is not this is not Mando. This is not. Um, um, Andor. What, 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 what? Exactly. None of that. I get it. But give me something, man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw on Twitter is kind of a discourse about the show right now is that like, what is filler to you is what this show is supposed to be about the whole time. I, mean, I get it. Star Wars for kids. Talking about, I mean, we got Andor now. Like Andor was not for kids. <laughs> like they almost said, Fuh, but they did not. And that's the closest you'll get to us on this podcast. Um, but I think the thing is like, it's fine to have filler, but you, you need to pace it wise. Like pacing is a thing people understand now. And I, I know there is, you know, after the two episodes we're assuming we're getting, you would assume, Episode after that is a calm down episode. That's what episode four was. Episode five was let's plant some seeds. And obviously, we have a couple more episodes to go before maybe there were some seeds planted in this episode, but it didn't feel like it. And it didn't feel like the Bad Batch should be the ones planting the seeds for that type of story. I don't mind this for our first episode, actually. This was the first episode of the season, and it was just an Indiana Jones type of type mm. of romp with some kind of weird, you know, um, capper at the end of it. Okay, cool. But, um, it's been five weeks, and it just feels like every week is just something that either involves part of the Bad Batch, all of the Bad Batch, but it has nothing to do with the overall arc of why why, why are the Bad Batch, if that makes sense. Yeah, like, and like this episode was, <laughs> we'll get into spoilers now, it felt more like season one where, oh, it's Hunter and Omega now with random character, and that's what this is, whereas Echo, Tech, and Wrecker were kind of separated. And then really didn't have any dialogue after they were separated for the rest of the episode that was relevant enough besides, I'm coming, throw this, or fix this. Um, the episode primarily dealt with Wanda Sykes' Fee character, uh, the pirate dealing with taking Omega on an adventure, the Bad Batch thinking, ah, oh, it's not true, whatever, she wants to go on to Scar and all and the Ancients. Uh, but it was pretty much the whole time like, this is really just to have Wanda Sykes get paid to have an episode or like we had Wanda Sykes but it's like okay yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. um I had to compare it to this but it kind of was giving me um Young Justice vibes a little bit where it's just like 
you tease something in the first episode, and then three and episodes of randomness. For it. <laughs> yeah, um, and I, I think that's an issue right now, especially because you know, season one we didn't know what was going on, but now we have even more relationship with these characters that we want to see them more. We want to see them do more things. Like we're more now invested in Crosshair than we were in the first season. We kind of hated when they cut the Crosshair all the time. Now we're like, no, give me that because that's show stuff I want to see. Um, but this whole episode. Pretty much like Kev said, they found a hidden compass uh, out of out of the blue. They just found a hidden compass that led them to a secret treasure run uh, that was made by the Ancients, which is a group of people older than the Jedi, which sounds interesting. They've kind of dealt with this a little bit in Jedi Fallen Order, where on like Zepho, the planet there, where like yeah, yeah, it's yeah. these ancient beings that found the Force and stuff like that. Because that's the thing. In Star Wars, we've come to know this, is that the Force isn't just Jedi and Sith. It's everybody. And so there's different groups before they were called Jedi and before they are called Sith. I that too in um, Rebels, the uh, the weird, like, buffalo horn being that lived in the desert, that, that was one of the Force, too. The Bendu. Yeah, that's what his name is. Yeah, I'm yeah, the Bendu. Yeah. Uh, Kanan. <laughs> uh, but the main thing was they get in it. They do an Indiana Jones type of, like, get through the traps, get through everything. Interesting thing is... Uh, Pretty much, like I said, they get separated where it's Hunter Omega and Fee, Wanda Sykes' character, where they have the main dialogue for the rest of the episode being, oh, there is treasure here. You got to believe me. All these stories are true to a degree. They find out what they're looking for is the heart of the mountain. But it turns out the heart of the mountain actually is more of like an inhibitor chip for what's really in the mountain. And that's Dialga from Pokemon or one of them giant robot things from Horizon, Kevin. <laughs> Dialga from Pokemon made me laugh. That's <laughs> yeah, what it was. You know it was. Dialga used Hyper Beam. That's what it was. It also did kind of remind me of Horizon, too, because um, in Horizon, they have these things called cauldrons, where it's actually where they actually build all the robots to try to kill mm-hmm. you, robots to try to kill you. And at the end of every cauldron, they always make you fight the biggest one in the world. <laughs> so, like, the one I just did, I had to fight the Spinosaurus from um, Jurassic Park 3. I was like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so they get to this. They find out they awaken the Dialga ancient being, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it turns out that it is just on a path of destruction. Who knows if it was a doomsday device or what it was that they unearthed. Uh, but it, it did give me a lot of vibes of, you know, we said Horizon. We said Dialga from Pokemon, but very Halo-y where it is very, like, the forerunners of, like, oh, they stumbled upon the flood. There's this ancient race that we thought was nice, but they weren't. Kind of like that a little bit. And then the forerunners, obviously, later in Halo 4. I got to say, man, just real quick, the flood is one of the most annoying villains in video games. Yeah, every time the little, little tiny bits that kept jumping on, like, I thought I killed uh, you all. You're still here. <laughs> God, it was so annoying. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, it kind of gave me Breath of the Wild vibes, too where it is the, I forgot what they're called, but the giant beast you had to defeat to uh, so you can get to Ganondorf and kill Dan oh, yeah. if you want it at the game. Kind of like that, too. Um, it is interesting that this big seed, though, was planted in the Bad Batch because it feels like it's more of like a Jedi-type thing of like, oh, there are beings before us. Let's find out what that is. It'll be interesting to see if they follow up on that or not because it is a weird thing to like, we have Order 66 going on, but we're focusing on the past. So we should be focusing on Stopping the future from happening. It'd be kind of a chip in, um, uh, what's her name? The um, the leader of the bat, not the leader, but, but like the mission giver of the bat. Oh, uh, Sid? Sid, that could, that could be a chip in her thing, because she always has somebody coming after her. Mm-hmm. Maybe she goes back and grabs that and figures out how to keep, how to contain it. Mm-hmm. And that's like her her um, her um doomsday advice, so to speak. And Kevin, <laughs> do you have the Bad Batch episode names in front of you for season two? Yes, I do. Uh, what? So what is the next one you said was Tribe, and then it's the two episodes. What are they called again? The Clone Conspiracy and Truth and Consequences. So I think we know that Palpatine is making an appearance in some form of this season. I think that's when Palpatine shows up of the Clone Conspiracy being maybe a Cody coming back and then Truth and Consequences being Palpatine coming to get his vengeance, baby. Amanda Cody. Amanda Cody. Uh, Then other episode titles you have are The Crossing. Retrieval, Metamorphosis, The Outpost, Babu, uh, Tipping Point, The Summit, and then Plan 99. It seems like The Crossing would be like, oh, The Crossroads. See you at The Crossroads. Oh, that video was so sad. <laughs> uh, and then Metamorphosis, some character changing their mind. 
I think once we get to episode 12, where it's Outpost, Pabu, Tipping Point, Summit, Plan 99, that's where you actually see its main connecting point to the larger Star Wars canon, which is most likely that mountain that uh, the, the Kaminoan yeah. was sent to last season. But it sucks that you have to get through 10-ish episodes to get to that. Um, and I I know, I know it's, the, it's the animated Star Wars has always kind of been like this. We just weren't used to, you know... Clone Wars coming back and banger after banger with his last season, minus the sisters episodes. Rebels being banger after banger in its final seasons. Bad Batch is kind of still figuring that out where its placehold is and everything. It sort of reminds me of a of, um, classic peak uh, CW where they were introduced like the main storyline of the, of the whole season, all 22 episodes for like the first three or four. And then be only slight mentions from episode like five to 12 mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it will kind of pick back up with the mm-hmm. main thing for the rest of the season on and off it's kind of, yeah. it's kind of almost like this, that, that same type of, type of strategy yeah so we'll see obviously what happens and the interesting thing is it'll be very interesting I know it'll be closer towards the end of the season when Mando comes out on the same day as Wednesdays of like alright Bad Batch is that why you saved all your episodes till the end because you're trying to prove your stuff up against Mando which won't happen uh, but like that why because we want the Star Wars synergy with that and Fallen Order or Jedi Survivor coming out to be like Star Wars is great in March. Move over, May. <laughs> could be that. It could be that. It also could, just, could be pacing. Whereas, because again, <clears throat> excuse me, the last two episodes of the Summit and Plan Ninety Nine are going to be released on the same day. Mm-hmm. So it could just be a pacing thing where like, okay, we're going to kind of lull you to sleep here, then we're going to hit you. With two episodes on February 8th, Clone Conspiracy, Truth Consequences, maybe lull you asleep a little bit again for a week or two, then pick it right up again and just, you know, trudge on through. There you go. But that was our thoughts of the show so far. Episode 5 didn't live up to the hype we wanted it to. And again, we were, anyway, we understand this, this, this is mainly a show to sell toys. And, you know, it's just going to be that. I will tell you, all the Bad Batch, we saw their different colors in this episode for sure. So they're like, hey, Wrecker's yellow now. So Google Bad Batch toys. I want to see what they look like, actually. Well, they got season one looks. They, I think they have season two looks yet. So, Oh, yeah. You got the Black Series, and you got all the yeah. minifigs and all that good stuff. They've got the Legos, if you want to do a Lego. Oh, one of them has, a, has an extender arm. That's yeah, cool. it's, it's Echo. Echo, yeah, yeah come on, cool. baby, it's, it's the best clone besides Rex. Come on, is Rex then Echo? Why? Because Echo's been through the ish. He's been through the ish. Echo, man, <laughs> Echo's been through it. Echo needs a, needs his own series. He got blown <laughs> up trying to rescue Master Pell. <laughs> Master Pell was a dick. <laughs> also, speaking of Echo, I haven't heard about that Marvel show in a while. I don't think it's happening. That's something we're also waiting on is Marvel. I, Where the hell happened in these shows? If you remember, I said Echo was going to be a placeholder. It's not the real show they're making. It's going to be something else. Well, we know I the Daredevil show is still happening, and it's actually gotten uh, writers from Arrow attached to it and lawyers in the writer's room. So that's going to go full steam. So I'm interested to see maybe they're just getting rid of saying, oh, Echo is great, but we're just going to condense it into Daredevil because it makes more sense. This Hunter um, Hot Toy is amazing. It's expensive, though. <laughs> Once you get in them Hot Toys, baby, that's going to be great for your wallet. This one looks just like Tomorrow Morrison. Oh, my gosh. Oh, they're all it's so to. good. It's the nice version <laughs> of it. Uh, but you can see everything we talked about so much more, including sharing your opinions on anything we talked about at Infinite underscore Pods on the Instagram or Twitter or going to Hot995.com slash Crisis Crew. Or you can see us record the podcast live at twitch.tv slash infinite underscore pods or watch it on your own time whenever you want the video version, youtube.com slash infinite underscore pods. And we are working on potentially doing a surprise thing this Saturday. We may be live streaming our reactions to what, Kevin? The Royal Rumble. Rumble. So if you made it to the end of the podcast, a little treat for you that Saturday we may be live streaming Maybe the Rumble matches, maybe the whole thing, depending on how it goes. Got to work out some kinks. But we're trying to do some magic and see where it goes for this podcast. Maybe for the next evolution of the podcast. The next evolu- evolution. Evolution. <laughs> 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 but as always, my name is Hoodie. And I'm Kevin. And you officially listen to this Thursday episode of What Kev? Crisis. On Infinite Podcast. Evolution is mystery.